Hello, hello, lovely humans of Earth. XFM Friday, it's here. <laughs> I freaking love this show. It's it's not, well, yeah, it's the show, but it's just Carl because I've kind of been looking back at all the stuff I've done and all the shows I've watched and, you know, trying to organize everything and just, it's he's by far my favorite. I mean, Bob Mortimer. <laughs> oh, man, I love the man. He's hilarious and stuff, but for some reason, just, out of all the comedians I've ever seen, Carl takes the cake. And the funny part is, he's not even properly a comedian. He's just... Carl. I was, I, there's a lot of words. You can fill that blank in with, like, a lot of things. He's just a guy. He's just an idiot. He's just... There's, like, a lot. But he's just Carl. And it's wonderful. And it makes me so happy. And Steven is gr great, too. And Ricky, well, is Ricky. But he finds the way to kind of bring out... I'd say the best of Carl, but it's not Carl's best. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the best content-wise, but not the best colors of Carl. Anyway, I'm excited, and I'm good. And it's kind of funny that I'm kind of... I don't know what date it is today. All right. I'm kind of close in date to them. That's just interesting, because if they, you know, mentioned a holiday or something, it's kind of, like, in the week. I can't think of any. I was going to say Valentine's Day, but that was, like, a bajillion years ago. So, um, yeah. But anyway, just food for thought. That wasn't food. That was just like a, a tic-tac for thought. There we go. Our Freaks Electric, Richard Eccles, Sugar Babes on XFM 104.9. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm Ricky Gervais. I'm not wearing it. I'm wearing Queen today, but... <laughs> oh, can, the irony. The irony of Carl Pilkington wearing that shirt is just beautiful. And the text is perfect. It's just beautiful. I'm loving these hidden little things. Okay, I'm sorry, I got excited. But <laughs> that just made me so happy. <laughs> Alright, here we go again. Our freaks oh, electric, by the way, thank you. Richard Eckles, Sugar Babes, on XFM 104.9. Steve. Absolutely. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant. Hello. Carl, the uh, the producer. Mandy. Seven Mandy. minutes past one of a Saturday, and what a lovely Saturday it is. It is indeed. By, well, it, it looks nice and bright, but it's deceptive, because I went out, and I just had a t-shirt on, and I had my jumper on me. I got out there, and I thought, this is chilly. <laughs> I, had pop, I had to pop the jumper on. Oh, no! So, uh, you me. know, just be careful. If, you, if you're just, uh, you know, looking out the window thinking, I'll, I'll go outside, pop a jumper on or, or, or a jacket, because it looks nice, but it is a little bit colder than it looks. Rick, can I ask, were you wearing the jumper around your waist? with the knot, or did you have it over your shoulders, like maybe I, you just jumped off a yacht? I popped it round my waist, and I'll tell you why. Okay. I tucked my t-shirt in for neatness and comfort. Lovely. But I know, even I know that's a little bit dorky, so sure. I was trying to hide the belt line. Okay, okay. So, okay. Uh, then I popped the jump on, didn't have to worry about it, did so now you go with the double knot? I didn't, I did uh, Because <laughs> uh, that can loosen if you're not careful, especially if you're carrying bags or you're busy on the tube. I know, but I would- Is this what my intros are like? <laughs> Just random, who the hell cares? <laughs> Please don't answer that. I know the answer. Please don't. Just, I don't, I don't need that today. I don't need that kind of negativity. <laughs> but, um, okay. Noted. Noted. Didn't mind that. As long as I didn't lose it. As long as I saw it loosen and fall, I, I okay. pick it up. And you'd then, uh, devastated if you and then clean it. Not in the uh, washing machine, though. Go just, on. I pop it in a cold wash soak, okay. right? And then leave it out on a few towels or something, or pop it over the radiator. So what's the problem with uh, putting it in a hot wash? Well, it can cause shrinkage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, coming up, we've got lo loads of tunes. We're going to be playing um, some of the best bands <laughs> around, some uh, some new ones, some old ones. Might even play some um, uh, Adamant. We don't know yet. <laughs> Let's have uh, Badly Drawn Boy, though, shall we, Carl? Current single. Badly drawn boy there, silent sigh. Is that the one with the duck? Yes, very good. Yeah. Video. Apparently, he stopped like wearing that. his hat around because he keeps getting recognised, and he's going to not wear his hat when he doesn't want to get recognised. Okay. Maybe pop it in the wash. Mm. I mean, be careful. That's just okay, you know what I was thinking the other day because they mentioned just because they mentioned that the other day I was walking. I don't even know where I was going, but I, I walked by here. Um, they still have. They used to be newspaper stands, but now newspapers are pretty much obsolete, so they don't really sell newspaper. But they, they have magazines, and just they sell random stickers, and just very random things, but mainly man magazines, right? I still don't know how they're surviving, because nobody buys magazines, but whatever. They're still around. And um, there's like these, they're little stands kind of on the sidewalk. They're not proper shops. And I was walking past one, and there was a Rolling Stones magazine, and on the cover was Slash, obviously. And I just remember thinking to myself, how many times has Slash been on the cover of Rolling Stones? Because, like, 
I feel like he's the guy they call every time they can't really find so they can't book anyone because I feel like he has to have been on thousands of covers every time you walk around it's just it's Slash and then I started thinking to myself exactly this if Slash didn't have that famous haircut like if, if, if the long hair if he goes out or if he cuts his hair or he goes out and kind of like puts his hair in a bun or whatever, doesn't have the famous top hat. Do people re- and the, the glass, do, do people recognize Slash? Like, I don't know what he looks like. I know he's hair and a top hat and a guitar. Guitar? Or is he the bass? I don't know, whatever, something. Musical instrument, <laughs> guitar-shaped instrument. Um, but if, 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 if I, I don't have those, like, little clues, I have no idea what the guy looks like. And I don't know if that's an everything or if it's that I'm the dumb one or because that happens with people. So I don't know. I was just thinking the other day, does Slash get recognized on the street? <laughs> that, that was just my little thought process for some odd reason. Recognized. Okay. Maybe pop it in the wash. Mm. No, I mean, be careful. Let's just have a kind of a light cold well, rinse. Yeah, light like cold rinse. Soak it because yeah. right, it's woolen, right? Mm. And then just leave it out on a towel. Or, you know, maybe How did I go so far in, back? Uh, no, near the immersion heater. What the hell did I or do? Over a radio, what, what or even the radiator. Or even the radiator. Is that a problem? It can <laughs> cause that sort of thing, you know, right, damaging to the fibres of the wall. He had, a, he had a kid last week. Did he? Okay, yeah. there's. Okay. That was Who weird. Who did? Badly drawn boy. Oh, right, okay. Dad Badly man. drawn little boy, he's yeah. going to call it. Isn't he? Brilliant, Rick. Yeah. Well done. It's a sort of satire. Mm. I'd like to see that as a headline in a tabloid. deliver, oi, oi, money, you your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, <No>. now, <laughs> go we go. Oh, Carl, Can we explain panic. why that's funny? Don't panic, Carl. I'm a professional. Oh. Don't worry. What's your concern, Carl? What's your concern? <gasps> I'm going to start saying that. Like, when I'm rambling and stuff, people don't panic. I'm going somewhere. I'm a professional. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> no. You can say... You I can, can't. You can! This is so unprofessional. It's... What? <laughs> what? What have we done? What, talking about wool? No. <laughs> Come on, Carl, what's the problem? What's the problem? You say. <laughs> he's great and he's He's lovely. so scared. Um, Come on, Carl, what's... Tell us. I don't know all the ins and outs, so I don't want to get into it. What? The thing. No, well, you look, can... you can't... Look, people are perplexed now. What's the, what's yeah, the what? thing, Carl? What's the thing? What are you worried about? Say. Is it, is it an email? That's been received by the head of yeah, XFM. Yeah, you've, you've got the email open. You, you can talk about it. You can say what it is. Okay, yeah, let me just without, say. Without. I don't understand it. Please note that under uh, under a ruling at the Old Bailey, any reference yeah. to Adam Ant's state of mental illness in any news report will constitute a breach of the ruling and therefore lead to serious action from his lawyers. That's right, and that's true. So we can't, we can't talk about that. You can play his records and... Sing his classic sing, songs. Sing songs. Yeah, it's best just to leave it, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what we... Yeah, Carl was a little bit worried. There's no way I was going to mention that or influence anything, and I totally agree with the law, so don't, don't panic, Carl. That should have never been sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because it's like, you know, accidents happen. Go when, on, then. When things like that happen, right, you know, you've been told not to mention it. Yeah. And you're like a little kid. Yeah. And, and once things are in your head... Yeah. It's difficult not to mention it. I mean... When uh, when I was a kid, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. me uh, my mum's sister Hazel right. was, was seeing another bloke. Um, another one. It's weird because she's a lesbian now. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. Okay. That must have been an interesting Christmas. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, she was seeing this bloke and it looked like Ken Dodd, apparently. Yeah, he looked okay. like Ken Dodd. Looked like Ken Dodd. <laughs> so people said, "Don't mention it because it gets it gets on his nerves when you when you like meet him and you go, oh god, you look like Ken Dodd.'" <laughs> so I said, "All right, his name is Will or whatever." And uh, I was introduced to him. First thing I said, "Nice to meet you, Ken." <laughs> <laughs> did you do it as a joke or did you? No, no, because you know when you know, they like, "I'm not allowed to say that." I can't yeah. Say that. I can't. Mustn't say that. Can't. And then yeah. I saw him. I thought, Jesus, it does look like him. <laughs> <laughs> This is proper, the co- proper concept of inception. You don't think about elephants, and all you're going to do is think about elephants. <laughs> it's just, it's that, but... Yeah. Came that's out. how it works. <laughs> <laughs> was it Doddy you turned her into a lesbo, do you think? Well, he wasn't a good-looking bloke, so... Yeah. Possibly. She started going out with Esther Ranson, though. <laughs> which is which is weird, out of the frying pan. What was the story with the lesbianism, then? Did, 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 how did she announce that to everyone? What um, age was she when she realised? Well, we, we, I mean, we're not a close family, do you know what I mean? We're not no. a family who keeps in touch with everyone. And I think my mum called her up one Christmas and sort of said, you know, how's... How's, how's the Diddy men? <laughs> yeah, how's and, Nutty uh, Ash? And yeah. she said, oh, no, I'm not, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> um, I'm knocking about with Sandra or whatever. 
right? And it was like, oh, right. Not big butch Sandra with the big earrings and the skinhead. <laughs> used to live down the road from you. I, I don't know. Used I to get met. Doc Martens wholesale. That's Sandra. <laughs> but but she lived, she had a haunted house. Go on. Um, <laughs> Who's Sandra? No, Hazel. Right. This, okay. Is this before she was a lesbian or not? Before. Okay. And um, there was a bike in the hall and the pedals used to go back. <laughs> there was a what in the hall? A bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, handy, isn't it? I never met <laughs> oh, oh God. God! Don't worry, we won't do, do anything. Oh, that's sorry. Awful. If you guys use that word for the reason I'm thinking, that's just awful. Oh God, no! That's messed up. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, got it. <laughs> oh, okay. that's great. Don't worry, we won't do, do anything. So, sorry, no, there was. I want to know about the haunted house. There was mm. a bike in the hall. And what there was happened? a bike in the hall, and the pedals used to go backwards on their own. And also, shoes used to stick to the wall or something. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoes used what? to stick to the wall. Yeah. yeah. Is that, okay. is that, is that, is that yeah. really, is that seriously a picture of Hazel's house? Damn, that wall's gross. No wonder shoes are sticking. Look at that. That's disgusting. That wall needs a wash. God. Shoes used to stick to the wall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds How like that. How do you a, find that out? A, a, a household. Yeah. Well, oh, dear. Go. Brilliant. Hmm? Maybe she should Normal. clean the walls. Thank you. Maybe she should. The Lars, and there she goes. What a great start to a show. We've had, we've had 20 minutes of some of the, the best banter, chatter, and music, and anecdote <laughs> anywhere on the dial. You're damn sure. right. High five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sweet, yeah. man. Sweet. Oh, uh, what are we talking about? Uh, now, oh, oh, well, I, I love that track. It's lovely. I, I, they've got a bit of the, the Liverpool gene pool, haven't they? That sort of doddy. You know what I mean? I like the Scouse sort of look, you know, the Scylla Black and the Stan Boardman. Yeah, it's particularly... They look the same! They're sort of happy in teeth and ears. And <laughs> it's happy I mean? in teeth and ears. Yeah. <laughs> what a brilliant description. Ironically, you know in mean? both the pictures, you can't really see the ears. <laughs> happy in teeth and ears. Yeah. <laughs> what a brilliant description. Yeah. Happy in teeth and ears. <laughs> yeah, that's just three of my friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now... That, to me, you, you tell me happy in teeth and ears and I'm imagining a bunny. <laughs> chew it on something. That's that's where my mind goes. <laughs> so, okay. A little insulting. Got a great track lined up, haven't we, Carl, that I've brought in. So I'm going to go off. Now, I'm not ashamed. As you know, me and Steve aren't worried about being part of a trend or, or you know, being trendy or jumping on about it. Steve particularly doesn't worry about, like, it looking shows. good or, well, you know. Uh, no, no, I'm saying. No, I, as a compliment, you don't, he, he doesn't worry about walking along like that or, you know. Well, this is, like a, I'm looking good. No, no, no. Good but I'm saying you don't mind the insults, freak boy or goggle eye or. Nah, swore off a duck's back, mate. Do you know what I mean? Or, or a new phrase that's been coined because of Steve's phrase, water off a frog's back. Who's saying that? Just a lot of, lot, lot, lot of your, what? a lot of friends Ouch. and that. But I mean. Well, my friends? Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of the people. Yeah, you, can you, you name names or? I, I can't really. Make promises you can't. I, I can't. I can't you really. Anyone up. I, I think it's the cagoule. Looks good. It does look. It's good. It's waterproof, Rick, and it's also stylish. I wear nothing underneath, so it's tight Ooh. to the skin. It gets sticky oh, in the weather. Yeah. Is that why you sort of rustle? Exactly. But what's the what's the what's the what's the <laughs> No, no, they just say. Is that why you sort of rustle? That's hilarious. One time I remember I was my, one of my brothers has a. I'd say professional because he does get work with it if he looks for work. But he has a little recording studio at his house, right? He just made the whole thing. He does it all himself and stuff. And one time, I went to record, like, a song or whatever and um, did that, did the whole music stuff. And, and then for an image or a picture or a video or whatever, I can't really remember. I think it was for a video. Um, he was like, all right, let me just film you with the mic and whatever. I was like, Okay. And I kind of went just normal clothes. I'm like, wait, but I don't like what I'm wearing. Do you have anything? Does your girlfriend have anything I can wear? And he gave me like a leather jacket. I was like, okay. So I put on the leather jacket. I freaking loved it. It was a little big because she's taller than I am and whatever, but whatever. Nobody saw that. And he, I, he made me wear the headphones and stuff. And he had everything set up where you can hear the feedback of whatever you're singing and stuff. It was the noisiest thing ever. It was so uncomfortable. All I could hear is <laughs> in my ears. And it was the freaking jacket, dude. It was so, like, how is it so noisy? That tripped me out. Because if you take them off, you can't really hear it. I mean, noise sometimes is, clothes sometimes is noisy. But that was crazy because it was going right in the mic, right back to my headphones. And it was, it was awful. I can't hear him crinkling or rustling or whatever. 
but that that's real. Noisy clothes is, is, is a real issue. I also can't wear noisy clothes to work because, well, people are going to hear me. <laughs> and they're not supposed to hear me when I'm, like, rustling about between curtains and stuff. So that that limits my wardrobe, oddly enough. Because yeah. I'm a pretty trendy guy, but I, I, as you say, I cut my own trend. You know, I make my own style. You know, that consequently the pipe. You don't feel that's an affectation? Uh, I don't think, I think because you're young and tall, yeah. the pipe looks a little bit silly. Go on. I mean, I know you're, wor no, you're worried about because because we've already lost the trilby. Well, I'm worried because pipes are going to die out. I mean, this is the problem. that There's no young people now who are taking up the pipe as a smoking device. Is there's there no anyone, young is there anyone under the age of, what should we say? Oh, we've said this 25? before and I don't think there was, there was no one. <coughs> I think there was some nutty old woman who phoned in and said, I smoke a pipe. Sure. But I'm talking about, you know, because years ago it was like an Oxbridge student, you know, you'd be at Cambridge or something, you'd have a, a lovely pipe, you know, a tweed suit, you'd be there studying. That was, you know, and that was the young gen always was smoked a pipe, but no one is now. I tell you this, though? in the year 2050, there'll be no pipes. They won't exist. But I don't well, see I the Well, I think issue. all, all um, drugs like uh, nicotine and alcohol will be banned, and we won't, uh, we won't be allowed to think our own thoughts. We'll have to live in the sewers like eating rat burgers That's or something. That's true enough. Won't we? Yeah. And it would have to download our memories or something, probably. Oh, God. And I, I but I'll be a rebel, Rick. I'll just no. be down there listening to jazz. No, you won't. <laughs> you'll, you'll just have a little chip in the back, and you'll be you'll be going out with a big fat man with a big toga on, and, be, and you'll be you'll be touching him. But, well, I think it's a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, you will, yeah. yeah. And I'll be fighting with the, the rebel underground. No, you won't. I will. No. I will. I'll you, be dead, won't I? <laughs> you'll be dead, yeah. I'll be dead, yeah. In 2050, you will. I'll be dead. Unless you, because obviously you're becoming quite wealthy now. You're becking a very rich man, obviously, from all your, you know, I'll celebrity have brain, endorsements. I'll have my brain put into a robot. <laughs> exactly. Made of titanium, and yeah. I'll have it, oh. Would you it, be cryogenically frozen if you could do it? I would, but I'd Why? leave myself out on a towel. <laughs> right. <laughs> Never, because if you do it too quickly, you, there is shrinkage. You've got to be careful. Did you read in the paper this week? This is true. Apparently, the, um, the world's oldest man, who's 113, lives in some little part of Japan. Sure. Like Little Island in Japan. Yeah. But apparently, the world's oldest woman also lives in exactly the same place. Now, I don't know if she's since died, but she lived in the same place as well. Okay. I can't say where that is. Oh, or where, not where, uh, I can't say those names. I can say Steve. Jesus. I can't even... Like, it's impressive, people that get to be that age, but personally, me personally, I wouldn't want to. It's too much. It's too long. Likely referring to, all right. She died when I was two. Okay. Interesting. Do you not think there's something suspicious going on there? I mean, isn't that a bit eerie to I'm, you? I'm thinking, have you ever seen him together? <laughs> and have, has he ever, have you ever found lipstick in his bag? <laughs> I think that would be one and the same. I wonder if it's something like, you know, what, what, what brought Godzilla back? There's some kind of, there's oh, some antics no. over there. No, there, there might be, might they're sort of like, yeah. Although, just hearing like, some of Carl's stories about school, there's somewhat going on there where he lives. Yeah. Did you say you did live near a sort of um, nuclear plant or something? <laughs> no, it wasn't a nuclear plant, it was a chemical plant. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Really? And is that, is that really true? What colour was the yeah. tap water in your area? It was better than it is in London. Right. Really? I was talking to someone about this the other day. Yeah? Um, <laughs> water in London's ropey. Um, what? And, and I use one of them water filters. Do you really? And the guy down in the office was saying it's a waste of time though, because they only work for a couple of water, like you fill your jug twice, and then the water's going through the same muck, isn't it? It That's is. That's true enough. But so it's not, if it's not work. getting through, it's not getting through. No, if it's, it's a filter, it doesn't matter, does it? No, yeah, it does. S still not good, though. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Good point. So you just, have you just thrown it away based on what that bloke said? <laughs> did, did he sell, he did he the sell you another one that he had <laughs> yeah, on him? Did a, he better, a better updated model. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did he have a suit and a when big... When you say, like, he works here, was he actually hanging around outside? <laughs> yeah. Did, did he with have a, a suitcase with, with a lots of these in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, dear. Can I, I just go back to insults briefly? Go on. You know what you're saying? Oh, no, no, I, uh, see that's... Goofy, that's no, not No, no, fair. no, because that's, that's what he said, it's in the head. I, what I, do you mean he said no, that? When did he no, say that? No, no, I mean... When did you call me Goofy? No, he didn't. Okay. He said about Baldy? once in the head. Hey, no, when it's, come, come off. Come off it. Don't what, who's calling like... me Goofy? No. I'm not even Goofy. No. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No. <laughs> I feel like this is the most casual episode yet, where they're just chilling and talking. Kind of like forgot they were on the radio and it's hard to follow when they all talk at the same time and stuff. 
This is the most just them hanging out episode that I've heard so far because the, the, I didn't do season zero or whatever, but this is interesting. I can sort your lookout, I can't. But yeah. do you know I can, how can I sort my lookout? I'm not even goofy, you've that's got, not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just needs sorting out a bit. I can't help it if, if my hair's not good. I noticed okay. the other day when Carl was sitting on your knee having his picture taken. Where it's a long story, right? <laughs> It's got a completely spherical head. It's slightly too small. I'm not being funny, because, I mean, you know, well, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a completely spherical little head. He looks a little bit like a baby hamburger. You know hamburger off um, uh, McDonald's? Sure. He looks like a little baby hamburger. And it's sort of quite put upon. It's S Suzanne thinks I look like that thing in that <laughs> Dulux advert. You know, when the woman pulls the head off that. Oh, he does! A little plasticine yeah. morph type. Oh, I love it. Even it. the mouth. And it's like a little head. <laughs> <laughs> really? And that's your girlfriend I saying see that. I know. Yeah. Anyway, listen, Ouch. let's let's get back to uh, uh, business here. This is uh, a great track. They it's remember. America by Simon <laughs> Garfunkel. This is where I started saying we don't care about being trendy and all that. That was it. <laughs> Strokes, last night, XFM 104.9. We're flying now. 35 minutes into it. <laughs> no real, no real hiccups. I don't think that. Not I, so far. And that oh, it's just going really well. My name's Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve. Hello there. Carl. All right. All right. Coming up soon. White van man. White <gasps> van yes. Carl. We ask Carl the questions that the son asked someone else. <laughs> exactly. This is a good feature. It's a great feature. I'll be it testing is, Carl on the new, the, the new re-education of Carl, as you know. He got a GCSE. So the last one in it. In week. history, it was the last heavy sort of one. Yeah. No. So Winston Churchill. We, yeah, because we've got, we've got, we're going on to more sort of uh, metaphorical and metaphysical uh, sort of uh, pursuits, aren't we? Not that book. Yeah, that's the uh, Aesop's Fables. Can't read that in a week. You don't have to read oh, it. Right, just choose fine, out. Yeah. Just choose the ones about the foxes eating penguins. You'll like that. Steve, over to you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I wonder if I don't think we've uh, made much progress yet on uh, sending Carl into sort of uh, into the air with the. No, balloons. this has gone a bit ballistic. Actually. Oh, the, the balloon. Oh no! Shut no, up! No, don't you? We've 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 inflamed the imagination of the capital. There's people offering left, right, and centre, and uh, I think it's a good idea. But I think we we should we should uh, you know make a day of it. I think we should send you up in some balloons, right? Maybe uh, you know. Well, I, hang on, I, really, I, let's, I before we carry on, let's explain what happened because people might not have listened last week. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> there are one or two, Rick. I don't believe that. People who are Name ill, them. maybe out of the country. Okay. Um, yeah. So last week we discovered was it that 623. Uh, is it 6,000? No, I read that 6,000 6, balloons yeah. filled with helium can Even lift a bloke off the that. floor. I think that's too many. I think that's too many. I think we could do it for less, certainly. Well, anyway, you. listen, there are various <laughs> organisations which actually exist already that can provide this kind of entertainment, this kind of fun. I mean, I didn't realise there was a whole kind of market for this already, but apparently there Not is. Not I know. Incredible. Anyway, um, so we're going to try and track one of them down. We're going to see if they can, they can uh, organise it so that you, Carl, can float into the air. We need to get you, what, is it at least 11 feet up? Yeah, if it's and just I think it's certainly higher. I mean, I can't remember what the record is, but it's <laughs> quite a long way. Eleven thousand, <laughs> eleven thousand feet. Yeah, but I think they're all official. We're, I want to do it with like little <laughs> those little balloons you get for a quid at the zoo. Or I don't something. think that can and be right, health and safety wise. I don't think that can be healthy. I, just, I, I, awesome. I think as we, if we get him to sign some out, which I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we'll cover our sounds. But yeah, certainly we're thinking of maybe making it a bit like. Where did he end up doing it? Is in an idiot abroad? What country were they in? Because it was just. The shadiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I've seen shady. <laughs> where I live, I've seen shady. But I can't remember where it was, but it was also like the big one. It wasn't even that many. I get that it didn't get him off the ground, but Warwick was flying, man. <laughs> um, was it, is it Tea in the Park? The yeah, uh, capital FM. Uh, yeah, event, the, you know, the big event. You get sort of steps. At least H from steps can come down and yeah. host the event. I mean, I, I, I don't mind uh, comparing it. Steve's going to do. Uh, Steve's learning to sort of like scratch and mix and beat match, and he's, I mean, you're getting pretty. I'm making a lot nice. of progress. Yeah, I'm you're, 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 you are going to be a turntablist. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Steve never learnt an instrument, which he regrets. You know, and uh, you know he's a modern lad, and uh, he's uh, he's using uh, turntables as his instrument. I've just I got two turntables and a microphone, and so far, I mean, I just, seriously, I'm cutting out big style. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, don't laugh, because it is mental, the sort of kind of stuff I'm coming out with. And I'm scratching, I've got, I've got the, the beats, you know, matching. Can you imagine that? Shut up, it's out the... No, no, no. <laughs> look at the Chemical Brothers, for goodness sake, if you're talking about freaks, look at those 
<laughs> Man alive! At least you cut your hair at Gavin. You know that the whatever least, it's called. Uh, they used to kind of at least faintly appear in their videos. The yeah. next one is just some shots of like what you see from outside a train. I that's know. Is, to them, that is more glamorous and exciting, apparently, than yeah. seeing the lads themselves in the video. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes. You're absolutely right, Carl. That's agree. the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on, on some music, yeah. if he had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't see him real well. This is, this no, is just right. so you don't look as tall. Put some butter on the lens and everything. <laughs> That's doing you a favour. <laughs> you know, I was on the. <laughs> I can't believe this is. This no, is just happening. so you don't look as tall. That's doing you a favour. <laughs> You know, I was on the. This is true. I was on the uh, <laughs> on the tube, right, coming in to meet Javier. Okay, wait, but honestly, like the picture of them there, I mean, we all know Stevens is extremely tall and stuff, but seeing him just cut out like that, you don't look at him and say, "Oh, this guy must stand up and be huge." You know, you just stand up and just you got to follow him forever, but. Now, having said that, I think it's the position Ricky in, is in in this Oh, snap. Ricky is in this picture. He does kind of look... You can tell he's not... I don't know if small or smaller. I don't know how tall he is, but he, he looks kind of short in this picture. But I think it's because he's like that. <laughs> but, I mean, if you crop it, fine. You don't need to put him far away and add butter to the lens. The day. And I was wearing a suit, and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket, and it landed on the seat. And I didn't realise this. And as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there, like an old guy, he picked up the phone, he went, Oi! Uh, lanky! You dropped your mobile phone! <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped the phone, <laughs> but did you have to do the lanky? But you knew who he meant. I bet you turned around straight away. It worked. <laughs> knew he meant, Steve. Yeah, but He's done you again. But He's I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was, it, was there any other lanky people there? <laughs> no. Well then. No. No, but my point was there was no one else at all. It was about to exit the train. <laughs> okay, so he didn't need lanky. He could have got excuse me, sir, or oi you, anything, but oi lanky. I know. It's that thing, though, isn't it? That's what I'm talking about. You say the thing that you don't want to say. It's like me with Ken Dodd and Will. I think he wanted to say this. Oh, well. <laughs> I think he took pleasure in it. <laughs> I think he went, that bloke's lanky. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> oi lanky. What's he going to do? Phone. Yeah. Do you but want it, your phone back or not? But this balloon thing, anyway, I, I, it's got a bit out of hand. Why no. is it out of hand? What are you No, it's about? funny. I just want to. I want. You know. You know I want to sort of like tie them all to the back of your belt. So as you go up there, you sort of tip <laughs> forward slightly, so you're going up slightly upside down. We could paint some advertising on your bald head. On your. <laughs> I was able to imagine that perfectly, and that's just so funny. Also, I I absolutely just love that Ricky's way of doing anything, if it was up to him, would be the most dangerous way possible. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that'll be great. Yeah, we'll do that, lanky. <laughs> <laughs> what what oh, Steve Steve So you're going up slightly upside down. We could paint some advertising on your bald head. Ah. Um, yeah, oh, that'll be great. Yeah, we'll do that, lanky. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be great. Here he comes. No, I mean, last week it was just a bit of fun about going, like, just lifting my feet off the ground. No. And that's a big difference to what it's got now. No, yes. okay, I'll tell you what, we'll do a hundred feet in the air and, we're, and I'll hold on it's to the rope. It's for each time. But we'll do it at Wembley Arena and we'll sell tickets. <laughs> but it'll be for charity, Carl. Oh, it'll be for charity. Know. No, we'll have lots of underprivileged kids coming along to see it's it, you know. It's just going out of hand. It's like, um, you know, I, I like karaoke, <laughs> but I wouldn't want to go on Stars in the Rise. Sure. And it's, it's got out of hand, that's how it's sort of, it's grown too big, I don't Who like Who would you it. do if you were on Stars in the Rise? I'd do that, uh... Moby? No, uh, that Jack the Knife song. I love Jack that. the Knife. <laughs> Old Mac oh, Heath. Yeah. That one, yeah? Yeah. Is Mac the knife? <laughs> That's what I do. But which? Who? Which, <laughs> he'd, he'd do a hip hop version. <laughs> but which of the many singers would you impersonate? You can't. It's not the song, is it? It's, it's uh, the singer. You could do um, Jimmy Somerville, I think, quite well. Yeah, Somerville, you'd be. Uh, they have to Moby. look like them. Um, okay. Did Morph bring out a single? <laughs> I don't think Morph did. Didn't he? No, I'm not oh sure. Oh my god, didn't he have a so theme tune? Did Morph phone in if you think Morph? Morph didn't speak, Rick. Let didn't him he? sing. Morph hardly had any features. True. Right. Never seen her heard of Morph, so okay. Sure. Express two featuring David Byrne, Lazy, XFM 104.9, quarter to two, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve's got the sun. Yes, I'm He's just gonna, gonna we're just gonna be doing white That was a weird sentence. I, it took me a second. <laughs> 
Kitana. <laughs> um, Steve's got the sun. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Oh, got it, got it, got it. Where we ask Odd Carl sense. the questions, the sun asked some other bloke. That's right. Because we think Carl's got more to say than anyone on anything. Yeah. Carl only tells the truth, by the way. Just remember that, listeners. I don't Off know. Off you go. Yes, um, well, okay. today's white van man in the sun is John Slade. <coughs> he owns his own door maintenance company. <laughs> um, his, uh, his answers are very informative, I have to say. But, Carl, what do you make of uh, the Channel 4 producer, aged 30, who duped a school into believing he was a teenager for a documentary? Are you familiar with this story? No, go on. Well, basically, a 30-year-old guy kind of fooled the school into, um, into thinking he was a pupil for a, a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's... Uh, that, 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 like, really happened? Because there's a movie about that with um, Drew Barrymore, like, Never Been Kissed or whatever. I, I watched through a little bit of it, and honestly, I didn't finish it because it was terrible. Like, the... It was just really stupid. <laughs> But, I mean, I like how the truck is happy! Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> I got distracted. But, I, how, I get that some people, oh, what's the guy's name? The guy from the original Karate Kid. Like, something macchiato or something. Something like that. But that guy never freaking aged. I, I think even when he did, like, Karate Kid, he looked 14 and the guy was, like, 27 or something. Like, ridiculous. Ridiculous amount, but unless you have an extreme rare case like that, I mean, how are people not realizing? Uh, yo, <laughs> we got a grown ass adult over here. <laughs> like, I don't get it. You know, and it, it, for you, he was a pupil for a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's uh, you know, and it, it, for you, you know, it, should anything go when it comes well, to making TV? I think I've said to you before. Um, there's loads of kids at my school. I remember being in the first year, and kids who what did what year the schools go up to? <laughs> I was in the Doesn't first year. What, what is it? Eleven. Five. Oh, sorry. First year, <coughs> infants and juniors. No, secondary school. Eleven. Right. Year eleven. Um, kids no. on beards and no. stuff. Eleven. How are you guys counting? Wait, what? Hold on. He said one through five is like. Okay, the first school, elementary, whatever you want to call it, but then up to 11? <laughs> okay, I thought it'd be 12. I, I don't know. Okay. Not year 11. They're 11 when they first go to secondary no, school. No, right, well, I'm 11. The kids oh. at, the, at the older well, end. Well, there's a the fifth form, and then there's you can leave when, you, you can leave when you're 16, <laughs> I think, can't you now? Right, well, kids who were 16 yeah. looked old. They, had, they, they did have beards. I remember going there and thinking some of them were teachers. I think he's answered that. Next one, what's the next <laughs> <Yep>. one? <laughs> Tattoos and everything. Um, I think uh, they had kids in the, in the earlier years, even. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's £38 million pound payoff has cost EMI staff... Uh, their jobs, and we're talking 1,800 EMI staff who have lost their jobs. What do you think of that? What happened? Yeah, I mean... I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on 38 million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she but has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say, um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because, uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. What the hell happened? Right. They've got rid of them, them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's going to do the work? <laughs> <laughs> you think, do you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have they should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Vicious circle, that. <laughs> right. Have you have you done you have done a business degree or anything? Commerce. You're, you did commerce. Yeah. What where did you do that? What did you do that? In school I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a cheque. <laughs> pay a bill and uh I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> Super important stuff for life. Um Okay. Check thing at, at at the time would have been useful, and the pay the bill thing is useful. Those those are skills that they don't. At least when I was in, they they didn't they didn't teach me actual life freaking skills in school. Okay, they taught me stuff that was supposed to help you learn how to think, but then you leave and you know nothing about taxes, how to pay bills, how to write a check. You know nothing about how to do important like documents. Nothing where 
as an adult, you're gonna need to know. You don't know how to make a resume. You don't know how to do anything. And, uh, hello, that would have been helpful. And Kellogg's, I mean, that's fundamentals of life right there. <laughs> did you, uh, did you get, a, did you get an O level or did you see? We know he didn't. You know. <laughs> but was, was there a commerce exam or was it just a division of Can't maths? What did he fill out a was check? It a subset of it maths. It was an option. It was like, if you want to do it, you can. What do. was it? Fill, fill out, out a check. check fill pay out a check, bill. Pay a bill. <laughs> Have a visit right now. I knit down Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time. He sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? Nice. What was in them? You know, Rice Krispies. Variety. And <laughs> Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space dust or whatever it is. Space dust? <laughs> so, sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, no. <laughs> no. That was someone else, wasn't it? That was an aunt. <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. That wasn't Special K. Oh, dear. What about this then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Sure. Um, weird this. Because when I was out with you... I don't believe it's going to be weird, whatever you say, no, Carl, go we, on. No, when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is, um, what I tend to do, because I nearly got mugged once, act You what? Up. You nearly got mugged I once. I was nearly got mugged. just yeah. thinking that. I didn't even think he was going there, but I was just going to say, the best thing you can do is just act crazy, honestly. Nobody wants to mess with a crazy person, dude. Just act freaking balls to the wall crazy or act like you're tweaking or something. They'll leave you alone. I, that, that was okay. Me and Carl just have some some moments. But I'd act you what? You nearly got mugged once. I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I'd, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right. And how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers, and uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester. It was quite late one night, mm -hmm. and he came up. He said, uh, "I want them trainers." I said, "You want them?" I said, "I worked hard for these." I said, "How dare you come to me asking?" And I, I got a bit livid, and I. <laughs> He looked, at, he looked at me like, oh my god, he's got a right one here, and he left me. Were you acting mental, or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not tetra okay. petrified, though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you, too, you're a big man. So what did you say? I, ju I just... I saw you I just, went, I just went a bit mad. I just kind of, because he said he wanted the trainers, and they were dear ones at the time. And uh, I just, no, you're not having these. I said, I've crafted, you, I said, I wanted these trainers. Yeah. And, you know, went on to tell him how I work out printers and I don't enjoy it. And, you know, I put in all these hours and that and I have to cycle home for about five miles. And I... Did he give you his trainers? <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife no, I just left, no, it didn't get that, didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave, you can't. <laughs> yeah, it's good. good advice, though, just act mental. Um, that's uh, not what I thought he meant, though, by acting mental. I, I, <laughs> I had a very different idea in mind. <laughs> and, um... That's that's just kind of sticking your ground. Sticking your ground. Is that how you say that? Sticking. Standing your ground. Or sticking up your fruit for yourself. I mixed them. Okay, standing your ground. That's just that. I mean, sure. But I thought, like, the scene that comes to mind is uh, <laughs> one of those cutaway scenes in Family Guy when they talk about having dinner with the actress that played Lois Lane in the old Supermans opposite Christopher Reeves. I can't remember her name right now, but apparently she went kind of crazy. And there's like a cutaway scene where she, she just flips the turkey and starts screaming and running around with her hands <laughs> in the air, just going bonkers, and she jumps through a window. I thought he meant that kind of crazy. That's what I was, you know, that's what I try. I mean, why not? What, what would I lose? <laughs> Maybe my life, but whatever. So what's it? Should he tried it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Sorry, She's what? Um, uh, see, what's it? Should he tried it the other night? What? Oh, Liza see, what's it? Should he tried it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Well, she says, oh, well, I've worked hard for these diamonds. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy being the daughter of Judy Garland. You don't know what it's like. Uh, finally, uh, apparently, um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another Yeah. Two million? Yeah. Why why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches in like when you're <coughs> in a plane. They're like two pound fifty for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean why is all this money at airports? What what is it doing there? Why have a go, just... have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. 
Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about paying bills and writing out checks. <laughs> <don't you> know? <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? It's and pretty boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts, um, yeah. boxes of cornflakes everywhere. Just what you imagine. Yeah. I so was it more? This is where you it. might be working. <laughs> this is where you're likely to work. Possibly. If you leave there was two trips. There was that and the trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in um, Cordon Bleu. In Kellogg's. <laughs> Cordon Bleu. What's that? It's like that... a supermarket. Yeah. And I, I had to leave the trip early, and the teacher went mad saying. Uh, they thought I'd got lost on the, you know, in the building and stuff. <laughs> you didn't tell the anyone? No, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left sure. and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. How old were you? Stuck in a printer. Um, <laughs> don't know. Stuck in a printer? I don't know. What was the printer's name? <laughs> <laughs> You worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon that Bleu! That's brilliant. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. I got sacked. You had to what, what did you get sacked for? Messing about in a, um, the, back in the, in the car park round the back. <coughs> yeah. Right, there was, there was a grid, and, uh, all the concrete had gone funny, so when it rained, you got, like, a big lake. Oh, yeah. Right? And I got in, do you know those big metal trolleys you get to, like, put all the food in while she's Oh, yeah. Out? And yeah. I got in one of them, and pushed myself out into this lake. Of cement? No, I was water. full of water, water. it right, been raining. Right, right. And I got stuck in the middle, right? And the boss was like, where's, where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans. And I was like... <laughs> and he was so, stranded in a leak. So someone said, oh, he, like, I saw him messing about out the back. He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this... <laughs> <laughs> lake in, like a, in a trolley. And he said, get back in. I said, Would you say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm said, filming sharks. I said, I'm, I'm, it's too deep. I can't get out, you'll have to pass me something. And he said, I'm not passing you nothing. He said, you can get out of there and walk through it. I said, I'm not, I've got my trainers on. Probably the same one. Yeah, you've risked your life for them. Yeah. I said, I'm not getting these wet. I said, I, I said what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid. He said, the grid's blocked. Now get out or you're sacked. I said, well, I'm not getting out. He's right, you sacked. So, so you were sacked. How long did you have to wait for the water to go down the grid? In the end, I did get bored, and I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. Uh, uh, how long were you waiting? Probably about half an hour. <laughs> just a long time. It, I just think, that is a I long mean, time. How did he get himself into that situation? That's he fantastic. Should we play it. record? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's Gosh, a nice. joy. Oh, you're an absolute pleasure. More White Van Man next time on awesome. the show. Uh, Electric Soft Parade. I keep trying to get the album for free from you, Carl. You've not sorted me out yet. I have to rely on other people to give me uh, different copies. No, of I did try. Tracks. I'll keep trying. Please do. This is one called There's a Silence, Electric Soft Parade. Um, <laughs> Gomez and Shot Shot on XFM 101.9. Uh, sorry, um... I was going to tell Steve something. Um, talk amongst yourselves. When you were out there, um, Johnny Mango phoned up and said to Carl, come on, when are we going to do this thing? And Carl got all nervous. Right? And, uh, uh, and he went, you don't want to do it, do you? He went, he said, well, I was just, it's going to get out of hand. I just wanted to go as high as a tree. And uh, he went, well, you can. We just I'll hold you down with a rope. He went, yeah, but he said, but when the crowd are there and they're all screaming higher, <laughs> higher, I'll feel the pressure and have to go along with it. <laughs> so what crowd? <laughs> <laughs> what crowd? All the people are going to be No, higher. We don't live in a, like, a medieval era. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be dancing bears and tumbling. No, I love it because he's actually thinking it through and that's adorable. He's actually, because that would be, I can totally see that happening. With everything they said, they were going to sell out an arena and bring unprivileged, pri I can't say that, unprivileged, I did it, kids, and just a whole bunch of things and make a whole charity event out of it and probably televise it and everything. He's thinking it through, okay? He's liter he's paying attention to everything they're saying and he's processing it in his own little car away. And that's just awesome. Midgets. <laughs> well, I don't know, oh, that's an well, idea. Hold on, uh, if there's anyone got any of those... Some them midgets would be amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Those. Some them midgets would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be dancing bears and tumbling midgets. Oh, well, I don't know, oh, that's an well, idea. Hold on. Uh, if there's anyone got any of those. Some them midgets would be amazing. <laughs> and that's literally what happened. Foreshadow that so much. Oh, dude, that is awesome.
awesome. That's hilarious. Oh. <laughs> I really wish I wasn't drinking water. Nothing happened, though. I, I, I behaved. It was good. We're fine. But, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Definitely. Less bones. <laughs> cheaper to do. Oh, you're going no, up. You're going going up with them. No, you're, you're going up with them. No, you're going up with them. Not just, no. With a midget under either arm. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, it's time for your uh, the re-education of Carl Pilkington. Uh, this week, Carl was studying uh, the life and times of Winston Churchill. Sure. Um, what did you make of it, Carl? What, 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 what did Churchill do for right, you? La well, last week I made a bit of an error with Hitler. Yeah, you just tried to remember too much, and it just yeah. it was way too much for me. Sure. So what I've done this week, sort of flicked through, got a few of the basic facts. Yeah. And what I've learned, right, um, <laughs> bit weird the way all these people have something in common that they're all a bit weird when the, when they're younger. Okay. They've got go on. What's, sort of illness. What's, go on. Well, you know, Rasputin, he, he wasn't well as a kid. Yeah. Che Guevara. Oh, well, this is Rasputin, the mad monk, wasn't well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Che Guevara. <coughs> um, asthma. Asthma. Really bad asthma. Mm. Dude, uh, I... Hitler. He was Only a one bit, bit mental. Yeah. <laughs> His mother. He got was what, a bit mental. That could be libelous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how 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 is asthma a problem? I have asthma. How is that just? Is that not enough to not be not like? Who bullies another person for at? Well, that does happen, I guess. But it's weird. And um, uh, if we don't. And Churchill, yeah. um, very, weak, very weak child. Was he? Um, he only spoke to his dad four times in his whole lifetime. Really? Yeah, didn't get on with his dad. Right. And I think one of the times when his dad spoke to him, he, he was having a go, saying um, he didn't do as well in the army as he wanted him to. Right. So that's, that's pretty you can sad. You hear Ricky Snick yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. So that spurred him on, anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm not going in all the ins and outs. Very, uh, very uh, important bloke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, seriously. I mean, yeah. your dad bought they the made tapes, a book about didn't he? Him and yes. And I can understand why, because he did. He did change a lot for us. You know what I mean? We wouldn't be sat here now talking like this. Why? We could, we could have been German. <laughs> yep. He didn't let that happen. No. Um, everyone had a go at him, right? When it when it when like uh, I think it was Chamberlain who was in power, yeah. and he was like saying, "Don't be trusting that Hitler." Yeah. You know. And everyone was like, look, stop causing trouble. Chamberlain sorted it out, you know, he sorted out a peace agreement. Yeah. And he was like, uh, no, I don't trust him. And everyone's like, oh, you, you know, you're just causing trouble, you know, everyone else is happy. Then it turned out that Hitler mm. did actually do the dirty. Yeah. yeah. And try and come over. I and remember, he did, didn't he do some, he started a war or there something? There was a conflict of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. Started, started a problem. Mm. And uh, everyone went, hang on a minute, that Churchill knew what he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Get him back in charge. Sure. And they got him in, and uh, Hitler was scared of him because he knew that he wasn't going to be having any lies or anything. He couldn't try it on with, with Churchill. Yeah, and especially uh, when he was a little bit pissed up and coked and with a was? big cigar. Churchill. He wasn't that. that he wasn't doing that. I think I think a lot were in the, in the, during the war, in the war cabinet. I think they had to have things to keep him awake all night and stuff. And uh, yeah. he certainly liked a brandy. Rick, Winston Churchill was coked up, was he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry, I just, I, this is something I wasn't aware of. If there are any historians uh, listening, okay. uh, if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm Was that in the sorry. world at war? No, I don't think Churchill so. Any, any, uh, any uh, uh, historians or, uh, uh, um, you know, experts on, uh, on war, um, did, uh, did Churchill and not, not some of the, uh, the other uh, people during, uh, I think, the First and Second World War, uh, take a little bit so, of uh, so cocaine? Well, so when it said that... Hitler, Doctors certainly used to. Hitler liked cakes. Would they be like the funny sort of cakes? No, they he probably did like a little bit of uh, Madeira cake. Right. Yeah, there's probably nothing like that. Sorry, carry on. So, um, anyway. He um, beat the Bosch. Yeah, did all oh, that. Oh, that's steady on. His personal life's nothing to do with it. <laughs> and the, the most amazing <laughs> bit is, right, he wasn't he wasn't fit, and uh, he had a couple well, of strokes. Well, he's a good-looking bloke in many ways. <laughs> Well, he, he, he had a couple of strokes, but he had a stroke on, say... See, we've had that. He <laughs> beat the Bosch. He <laughs> likes to have a couple of boss. strokes. Yeah. Let's not get into innuendo, Carl. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> right, say he had, like, a stroke on a Tuesday. <laughs> 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 he, was, he was up and fighting again on a Wednesday. Really? He was, he was a strong bloke. Yeah. And then he died at about the age of 86 or something. Good, he's a good lad, wasn't he? Okay. He was really good. Yeah. Is, so is, he, is, he, is, he the, is he the one you, you favour most of all? I'd ones say out of all, I mean, Rasputin, I don't understand why you got, like I said, I don't know why they made a book on him. No. No. He just didn't deserve it. No, no. Che Guevara, you know, he had his, he had his time, I suppose, and uh, yeah. did, a bit, did a bit good for certain people. Sure. Sort, yeah. Sorted Cuba out. Yeah. Doesn't really affect me. No. no. Uh, 
Hitler, I mean, enough said. Yeah. yeah. Bad bloke. Churchill sorted <laughs> it all out. Yeah. And like I so said, your favourite out of the four of them, the, 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 of all those four, is Churchill. Churchill, yeah. He's brilliant. Brilliant. I, 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 I agree. I agree with you, I think. What I love uh, <laughs> with, with your kind of sort of summary of these people's incredible lives is the way that it's almost like I remember in Looking magazine. <laughs> I don't remember looking. It was the Junior yeah, TV Times. Looking. They used yeah. to have um, half a page, which was a comic strip, yeah. summarising someone's life. You might have, say, Five Star, the story of Five Star, yeah. and you'd have a picture. I always remember the Roger Moore one yeah. was a picture of like Roger's parents. It was like Roger Moore was born in 1930. Da, da, da. Picture of Roger's parents. Roger grew up during the war. Picture of Roger yeah. running down the street. Right. Yeah. This is a school kid with a, a Spitfire coming behind him, like he was going to try and shoot him. Mr. Smith, surely. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Mr. Smith. Yeah. Re Roger uh, took up acting. Picture yeah. of Roger like acting. Yeah. Roger became James Bond. James Bond, Roger's now a popular, um, you know, star in his own right, and does a lot of work with charity. Brilliant. It summed up the whole thing in kind of. I think they used <laughs> to have that in uh, uh, one of the TV Times or the yeah, Sunday. I, I, I remember sort of when it was uh, Tina Turner. Um, st uh, oh, what's it? Born Sarah May Bullock. Uh, then it was Nutbush City Limits. Stop hitting me, Ike. <laughs> yeah. And then the, 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 <laughs> simply <laughs> the best, exactly. and that was it. it was, <laughs> exactly. That's very much what the, uh, how your summary of. of Great, great events is. But I'd say on. if you didn't know about Churchill, you've learned a bit today. So I was so can, I any, can people call in that? From the stuff Rusty put up there, because from Carl, I learned nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, not even A for effort, dude. Like D for effort, but sure, sure. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 all these, all these fellas taking that? cocaine. Uh, I think I'm right. It's O eight seven hundred. 800-1234. Yeah? Give us a call, XFM 104.1. Did Winston Churchill and various other dignitaries take coke during the war? During the war, saying up for the war effort, the, the emergency uh, summits and meetings, I, I, I think it was, I, I think it's been documented. I could be wrong. And let me tell you now, it's not happening today. Okay. Wow. Pete, you're on there. <laughs> He's there, isn't he, to save me? For Nancy, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carfield. I'm getting excited <laughs> now because we've had loads of um, calls and emails, uh, uh, not only backing me up, but going a little bit further. Um, apparently, uh, uh, Johnny Mango called in again. He's, our, he's become our sort of official researcher on, the, on this show. Um, Love it. But, um, there is evidence that uh, Queen Victoria in Balmoral, with a young house guest, Winston Churchill, used to consume cocaine-filled lozenges. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. Also, uh, MDMA was a, a precursor okay. sort of ecstasy, a derivative, and uh, that was big in the day, giving soldiers, you know, a little um, pick-me-up. So, it's not so mad, is it? It sort Winston of makes Churchill sense, because he was it? into his speeches and that, and they say that coke gives you sort of... <laughs> You know the balls to stand up and, and say like. Not that that's a good thing. And no, it's not. No. Definitely not. No. Right. But it apparently it gives you it gives you it makes you confident, doesn't it? So you can stand up and say, you know, we're going to fight them on the beaches. Yeah. And all that and and say yeah. like you mean it. It's exactly yeah. Okay. When he was sort of like you know um, a little bit pissed up with his cigar on, coked off his tits, he wanted to fight. He didn't care where it was. He'd fight on a beach. He yeah. didn't care. He didn't yeah. care if he got sand in his new trainers. Exactly. He was boosted up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to fight? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why he was coming hard. He was very much. You got to think of him as the Liam Gallagher of his day. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Are we oh. allowed to talk about this? I mean, I don't mean in terms of referencing drugs, but are we allowed to, is this like libelous to Winston Churchill? We, one, or you can't family? lie with the dead. Yeah, but Two, you, it's a, a is lot that of only it. in America? We're, we're, I'm asking, and I, we're, not, we're not saying, you know. It, to, two, I think you're prob probably going to do a fair, fair comment. Um, uh, three, we say we were joking. Yeah. Four, it's a satire. <laughs> yeah. Um, five, we love him. Five, we're not, we're not <laughs> condoning drugs in any way. Six, this um, is Dermot O'Leary's show. <laughs> I didn't have a go at him anyway. I said he's alright. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any law against Rasputin, we might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> law against Rasputin. Law against you Rasputin. did willfully Rasputin. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh man, I have that so, 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 so just ingrained in my vocabulary. I don't know if that makes sense in English. Hand washing. I don't think it does. But basically it's that when you, when you just completely remove yourself from something and say, I had nothing to do with that. In Spanish, it's se lava las manos, it's hand washing. <laughs> it's a little gesture, it just always comes out, but I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm going to look crazy if that, I, if you guys don't know what that means. <laughs> but that was that. 
blew over you the airway. You did slag off. <laughs> Laura Gates. <laughs> Laura Gates. You Rasmus. did willfully rasput. <laughs> yeah. All over you the airway. You did slag off Russia's greatest love machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't shoot him till he was dead, did you? Oh, oh put some poison into it. I'll tell you this, if there's any other historical questions that people want answered, then we're the men. Because really, with, with the three of us, our knowledge of the fact that the Hindenburg was filled with helium, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, <laughs> the, the kind of coke habits and various drug habits of, um, of Britain's most famous uh, political leader, yeah. we've got the answers to all of it. Einstein. Okay. Go on. I found out in the week that he, um, he didn't talk till he was six. See, it's all... It's all these people who are weird. Churchill couldn't read, could he, till he was like eight or nine? It's all these people who are weird. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. He had uh, he got a D in history apparently GCSE. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Just one better. Mm. No, but um, Carl uh, called me in the week and he was a little bit stressed because he's had a couple of he's had a. Oh man, wait, what was the prompt for that? Baby Einstein? No, Baby Einstein. Uh, he got a D in history really apparently yeah. GCSE. That was cute. <laughs> Just one better. Mm. No, but um, Carl uh, called me in the week and he was a little bit stressed because he's had a couple of he's had a bad week now. He got stressed about Hitler and. And Churchill and I said, well, we're, we're, we're chill out a little bit, and we're, I'll teach him something a little bit um, cosier. And I said, oh, what about animals? No, you know, not frightening other yeah. animals. You're interested in animals, aren't you? Yeah. You know. And um, and he went, oh, all right then, all right then. And then he went, okay, here's a question for you, Heather. So there's there's three animals without ears. He said, and I've told you one. <laughs> and I went, well, that's the snake because he was talking about the snake. He went, I went. I went, hold on, Carl, there's loads of animals without ears. He went, there's not, there's three. I went, there's loads. I said, jellyfish, worms, or, um, single cell protozoa, peripherous. But he went, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Animals, proper animals. I went, they are animals. He went, no, proper animals. And I went, do you mean mammals? He went, what are you on about? I said, uh, are these animals, are, are, have they got legs and are they fur bearing, right? And, and he went, one is. They've got legs. I went, I don't know, I give up. He went, right, the turtle. I went, right, yeah. And he went... Turtles have fur now? That was cute, but... That is like the cutest turtle ever, by the way. That's such a cute picture, but... Oh, okay. Went, I'm missing right, the fur yeah. part, but sure. I don't know, I give <laughs> up. He went, right, the turtle. Okay. I went, right, yeah. And he went... And the bumblebee. <laughs> he said, that's the one with fur. <laughs> sure, the fuzzy bumblebee. Thank you for not putting an actual bee to freak me out. <laughs> that is so sweet. <laughs> Today I was listening to music <laughs> on YouTube, on YouTube, free YouTube music or whatever. And, um, it just, I just kind of let it run, and they always put, like, the album cover of, of whatever song. And at one point, I was listening to Papa Roach. <laughs> well, I was doing other things, and at one point, I had to go to that, um, the tab, and it was just a big picture of a roach, and <laughs> it just freaked me out. Urgh, I hate that. I hate that. So thank you. That is very sweet. Ah, oh, they don't have ears. How well they can hear. All right. They're sensitive to the vibrations made by sound traveling through wood or other materials. Ironic that for an animal without ears, they communicate by dance. <laughs> That's the one with fur. <laughs> the one uh, What are you thinking? What is in your head, Carl? Which has got the most fur, a bee or a turtle? <laughs> it's not fur. What is it? Well, well it's... It's... What is you know, it? He's done you there, Julie. What is it? It's their hairs, isn't it? It's like a, it's a hair. It's a keratin thing. So it's not like fur? we have like mammals grow fur. No. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Nuh-uh, dude. <laughs> He's not convinced. It, it, no. it, 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 so when on, we say that, when we say like fur, we, we, <coughs> mammals are warm-blooded creatures, yeah. uh, often, uh, usually percent, or there's a few exceptions, right, that, that give their milk to their young, nurture their young, and they have fur. Have you heard about osters? O osters? Um, oysters. Ah. <laughs> um... They, that one minute they're a man, then they're a woman, then they're a man again. Oh. Like Eddie Izzard. Now that's, that's libelous. <laughs> He's a transvestite, could I say. He's not a transsexual. Let's say that straight away. I'm retracting that. Right, go on then. Give us what? some more facts. Um, no, I've got you, um, Aesop's Fables. No, but you had some more facts you told me that were dead good. I just wondered if Steve knew them. Dead good. What? What do you want to know? The ones that you read out to me. You had, um, you had one about a, uh, the spiky thing. Go on. Porcupine. Give yeah. me a clue. 
How many spikes has a porcupine got? Don't know. How many was it? I think it was about ten thousand. But I, I, these aren't these aren't the most That's interesting a lot. facts, are they? It's all right. <laughs> it's all right though, isn't it? Yeah. And he went. But how can they say that? You could say that. Uh, uh, you know, we've got a certain amount of hairs in our head. I went ten, a hundred thousand average. You went, yeah, but I haven't. So how do we know that that porcupine that they've counted is the same for all of them? <laughs> Might have had clearly, alopecia. clearly it was a. <laughs> well, clearly it was one with alopecia kind of bald because they said ten thousand, and then the facts state thirty to forty thousand. So it was a balding little porcupine, spiky thing. <laughs> yeah. All of them. <laughs> Might have had alopecia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might be a particularly hairy one. You know what I mean? Right, you've got a, 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 do you know, do you know what a fable is? I tried to explain briefly. Do you, do you know what a fable it's is? It's got Carl? a rough idea. Okay, it, it's a thing that uses sort of uh, metaphor, analogy, just to, to, to explain sort of uh, 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 morals. I mean, they're, they're very, they're very, very old for a start. And it's all, th um, I'll give you an example of one. Um, uh, oh, a quick one. Oh, the one about the, the, um, the dog with two bones. Uh, he goes to a, a dog's got a bone. He sees his reflection in the lake, and he thinks, "Oh, that dog's got a nice bone. I'll have that." And as he goes to get that one, the reflection, he drops the one he's got, and that's one about you know. I think. Was... Okay, that's fun and all, but oh my god, that just reminded me of an expression in Argentina that I absolutely freaking love. Argentina has some really funny expressions, especially when you translate them. Make no sense, but some of them are just fun. And there is one that. I don't know why, but the picture of it just brings joy, and it's just, it's so perfect, and I don't know who the hell came up with this, but it is happier than a dog with two tails. <laughs> tell me that isn't adorable. Tell me you cannot, like Tails from Sonic, tell me you can't picture a dog with two, kale, two tails just extremely happy, just wiggling the butt and moving the tails, and just, just over the moon. That's so cute! Like, it makes no sense, though, because just because a dog has two tails doesn't mean they'd be happy because they have two tails. They'd have to be happy to, I, you know what I mean? But still, I just, I think that one's so cute. And every time I picture it, I always picture a golden retriever. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'll calm down. <laughs> that, and as he goes to get that one, the reflection, he drops the one he's got, and that's one about, you know. I think I was, uh, I was told one when I was younger. Go on. Uh, I think it was one. <laughs> this young lad. He's got a dog, right, and he's sort of, he's about eight years old, and this dog, he's had it since he was about four, and it's a bit tired now, and he chucks sticks for it, and he doesn't, he doesn't go for it, and, uh, he's saying to his mum, oh, I want a new dog, because this one's useless, it doesn't do what, you know, it doesn't have any fun with me, so they say, oh, no, but, you know, Rover's a good little dog, you should look after it, and he's like, oh, I don't, I don't like it, I want a new one, so they buy <coughs> a new puppy. And it's it's running around, yapping about, and he's loving it, and he's playing around with it in the grass. And then uh, one day he goes to the park, and he's messing about and rolling about with it, and he falls into the lake, right? And the little puppy's, like, yapping at him, and he's going, help me, help me, the little, little dog's yapping. And then the old dog comes and gets his collar, and it pulls him out of the lake, and he goes, oh, God, you know, why did I forget about you? You're the better dog. And he loved that one again rather than the puppy. I got a the... feeling that was Lassie. Well, yeah, <laughs> that was an episode of Lassie. What well, was, what's the moral? Them. What's the moral there, Carl? What, what's that telling? What, what's that explaining through Love analogy? Love people even though they're sort tired. Of, don't forget the old. <laughs> Look after old four people. Four years for a dog getting old. Well, they never said the dog was four, though. <laughs> I remember there was one I heard once about a young boy who, who got trapped in a lake. Inside a, a cage. A cage. But he, he, he <laughs> loved his trainers so much. He loved his so much he wasn't going to get them wet. And but the even though he had came, to get out there. And even though he thought that was the important thing because it's material value, he actually drowned. And the trainers were no good to him then. Oh, sorry, what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say I told you so. Now I want to uh, clear a couple of things up. Oh my God. Um, I love when he cuts them off. Obviously, music. me and Steve, we, we love Carl. This is Same. not, this is, the things we give Carl to read and talk about, it's not to embarrass him or stress him out at all. We genuinely like his view of the world. Yep. In fact, we did an interview yesterday with a bloke from the Standard who really liked the show and said, do, do you like Carl? Because you take the piss out of him a lot. And, um, you know, we, we just like to say, we love Carl. Mm -mm. I said to that bloke, I said, it's like I've got a new kitten. I can't wait to get in and see his little face. Oh, my face. God. <laughs> Aww. I had a cat that looked like Ollie. <laughs> the 
random car picture. Um, Pickles and Ollie, those are actually really cute names for cats. Saturdays, I like didn't that. I? Yes. And uh, uh, I think I'm worried because I thought I'd give Carl something he was really get his teeth into with his Aesop fables. It involves animals and, you know, little stories. But I've given him <coughs> a couple and he doesn't seem to be that impressed or understand the, the concept. It's just of what. you said you'd bring in an animal fact book as well. I can't see that anywhere. No. <laughs> well, you can only read one book at a time, can't well, you? Why didn't you bring the other one in first? Well, it's big. I've, I've got to work my way up to it sometimes. I'll probably have Is to get a heavy? cab. Because it's a bit big. Now listen, I'll give, it, I'll give this one. This is an easy one. Now just think, right? Think just what it means. They're not that. They're not that hidden. They're not that cryptic. Just think what this means, All okay? Right. Okay. When the hares addressed a public meeting and claimed that all should have fair shares, the lions answered, "A good speech, hairy feet, but it lacks claws and teeth such as we have." How would you use that? No. What, what do you think that no. means? This is this this translated from the I don't know, uh, Greek or something. I don't know. It was it was Aesop. Where's he from? Greek. Yeah. So it you know it. it Stephen's should I, should been I do quiet it in my own language? Okay. Um. So what what would happen if there's 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 hares and they have a meeting in the jungle with like loads of lions and go, hey, hold on, wait a minute. I, love it. I think we should all be equal and share everything. All right. Happy. And the teeth lions and go, ears. well, yeah, it's easy for you to say. We've got claws and teeth. Yeah. What does that mean? Happy teeth and ears, claws and teeth. Different teeth, but they both have teeth. He's saying, like, uh, coarser hairs want that because it's better for them. The lions get nothing out of it because they're already king of the jungle. That's right. So it's, ne it's, ne it's negotiating from weakness. Anyone can negotiate from strength, but negotiating from weakness is your... It's, it's, you know, it's, it's be lovely. It's a lovely utopian look at the animal kingdom. But the way you said it is better than the way they worded it. <laughs> but, that's uh, but that's because uh, Ricky's very much the modern Nisa. <laughs> 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 I mean, many people have thought that. You know, that's why sure. he's getting a lot of awards with the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> for him, Thank that's, you. that's a So look, AR, take that home, read ones you like, and tell me about the ones you like, ones that click. I don't care if you only come in with like one or two. Go, I'll tell you what, Rick, that's a mate that there's one thing that I've learned from that. You know, because sometimes you can know all these phrases and until something happens, you don't, you don't think, you know, you, everyone's heard, you know, to, um, I don't know, to err is human, to forgive divine. But, and then some, uh, you know, might happen, do you go, oh, that, that's what that means, that's amazing. So, you know. Do you know any? You know what bothers me a lot? There's a lot of phrases that have become extremely popular, but they are half of the pro proper phase. Fa phrase, sorry. Whatever, let's say saying. There are a lot of sayings that are extremely popular, but the part that got popular was just half of it. And the part that got popular is meaning the exact. I can't speak today! The exact opposite. Of what the phrase originally <laughs> originally meant. Oh, I don't know if that was understandable because I spoke like an ass at. But one good example is blood is thicker than water, right? But hold on, because I can't remember the proper words. But the proper saying. There we go, the full quote. Quote! That's the word I couldn't think of. They, they got it to mean, right, that blood is thicker than water, say, oh, family is more important than, you know, friends or whatever. It isn't family. But the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Ah, see, it means the opposite. And there's, like, a lot of those that just, the jack of all trades is another one. That one pisses me off, too. Hold on. Full quote. A jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. And I don't know how people just flip it and, and just... Shorten it to mean the opposite, and that's what becomes popular, and <laughs> it's infuriating. But, um, sure, sure. What they said. Uh, and then some, uh, you know, might happen, do you go, oh, that, that's what that means, that's amazing. So, you know. Do you know any, Steve, I found? <gasps> Wait, what's that? A fable. Uh, well, I would imagine that the most famous one I've always remembered is the, uh, you know, the, the lion with the, uh, the thing in its hoof. Remember that? Paul. The, the lion, Oops. yeah, with, the, with the, the, the spike in its paw, and a smaller animal gets it out for it, but it still attacks it anyway. Well, that's life, isn't it? Well, I <laughs> read one the other day, actually, which was very interesting. Oh. It was one that uh, the famous film director Orson Welles said. Oh, yeah. Which he said, uh, apparently there was a, a, a bear going across uh, a lake, wading through the lake, and a scorpion said, um, 
well, let me go on your back, will you? Come on, just let me go on your back, we'll go across, it'd be brilliant. He goes, well, no, you'll just sting me. He goes, don't be stupid, if I sting you, you'll die, and we'll both drain. And he goes, oh, fair enough. Who, who was doing the stinging? The scorpion. The scorpion. Right, okay. The bear. And the bear's wading through the water. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the scorpion jumps on the back, and they wade through the water, and halfway across, the scorpion stings the bear. And the bear goes, well, we're both going to die now. He goes, yeah, it's my nature. I thought he was going to say, I can swim. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, you're the best. What's, what's the one about, um... Does that mean anything to you? It's my nature. I, you know, that's in that's, my nature. That's the way it is. That's, that's what I do. Yeah. I'm a scorpion. Yeah. One of my favourite ones... Th these don't mean anything to you, do they? I mean, what I'm saying is you're not impressed by them. They're all right. What about why this? What about this one? Don't trust bears here's, what I, here's one of my favourite... <laughs> <laughs> what? He said, well, why not just say, don't trust bears? <laughs> the, bear, the bear's the, bear the one that was one. too trustworthy. Don't trust scorpions. Yeah. Right, yeah. it's one of my favourite ones of all time, okay? Um, uh, a lion is dying, he's an old lion, he's in the front of his cave, and all the animals come around, like the foxes and the hyenas and, and, and the, uh, the rabbits, and they're all taking the piss out of him, and they're laughing at him, and they're laughing and going, you can't fight us now, kind of, and just before he dies, he goes, fine, but I was a lion once. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> don't know. Well, he's saying... It's better to have lived and had what I had, because I was I was great if only for a, a short time. And you lot are still alive, but pff, you're nothing. You're mm. you're rabbits and hares. I was a lion once, so you know. I'm are they happy. always using Hockey animals lion. for these stories? <laughs> Mainly. Well, yeah, I could I could change it to refrigerators and household appliances <laughs> if it would make it help. But animals, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember the one about being ill a lot, and you say something about, um... Go on. Uh, you know, mm. if you keep doing that, if you keep having I kind of want to hear the story now. There was a refrigerator that was on its last days, and then the toasters and the microwaves and the frying pans came up and were laughing at it and saying, oh, you're going to die. But the refrigerator was like, yeah, but I used to be a refrigerator. <laughs> I kind of want to image of that now. <laughs> Off, you know, Beautiful. something about, um, go on. Uh, you know, mm. if you keep doing that, if you keep having time off, well, I won't believe you. That's the boy who cried wolf. Yes. Is yeah. that one? Yeah. Do you know yeah, that one? Have you heard the I, I famous know. one? This is possibly the most powerful one. When you're pulling a face <laughs> and they say, well, if you wind keep doing X. that, the wind changes. I've heard that. Because like yeah. yeah. you know that's what? scientifically proven. That is. That can happen. <laughs> that can happen. Should we yeah. have hip hop hooray? Yeah. Are you yeah. queued yes, up for that? No, but can you, uh, <laughs> Carl, sort it out, mate. I was going to. No, come on, this is what I asked you to play, mate. If you've not, you know, you're getting too big for your boots now with your showbiz <laughs> lifestyle. You're not paying yeah. attention, are you? You're not playing yeah. the record if you want you to play it. Heat magazine's favourite. Yeah. Okay, so, um... I oh, you dropped that. You've been very clumsy. Oh. You know, you're, uh, you know, with the big I can't you believe you're not... Oh, fables are great. He's not impressed, is he, really? No, I am. I, I mean... You know, once I get to take this book home tonight and that, have, yeah. a, have a read, I might, I might change my mind on them next week. You won't. You're coming all stressed. I'm, and not, I'm not impressed with the ones you've you've been talking about, I must admit. Okay. Okay. They're the most okay, famous th ones, This though. album is by this group, Nerd, who are big uh, hip-hop and R&B oh, producers so in the States. Yeah. We've played a track from them in the past, Bobby James. This album's been re-recorded, I don't know why exactly, with live instruments. You don't get many R&B and hip-hop records now with live instruments, so it's pretty... It's, it's all computers, isn't it, Steve, <laughs> these days, and drum machines. And uh, there is a forthcoming single. I suspect it might be this track, Rockstar. I'm not going to play that. I'm going to play a uh, track two, Things Are Going to Get Better. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No order. Even in music, here to stay. people make Sadly, we're not here to stay, Steve. We've only got about two more minutes. That's true. Yeah? Well, I think that's just time for some uh, interesting facts that uh, Johnny Mango, our researcher from uh, LoseControl.com, has uh, emailed us. A few uh, familiar ones, favourite ones of yours, I think. Cool. Um, Any ones I don't know, though? I, don't, I think you know this one, don't you? A pig's orgasm lasts for 30 minutes. I know. And uh, a pig can't actually look directly up. We can not stop after 30 minutes of coming. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, Daddy, be careful here. That's incredible. Remember what happened to Tom Bins? Go on. Humans and dolphins are the only species that have sex for pleasure. Uh, bonobos do as well, they've rediscovered. Really which, which is a... Uh, bonobo? Uh, yeah, um, a, 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 a chimpanzee, like a chimpanzee. Right. So, yeah. So it's three now. Can't believe dolphins are getting they're more... Three. Three. They're, all, they're all at it now. <laughs> <laughs> dolphins get more... <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, polar bears are left-handed. Oh, that's so cute! But he's doing that with his right hand. But that is so cute. Um, how do they? Th that's one of those things that. How is that a fact? How how do they know that all polar bears are left-handed? That one seems a little suspicious to me. But 
uh, back on the Dolphins. Not only are they on one of the only animals that have that for pleasure, but they also are gender friendly. They don't care about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, polar bears are left handed. Yeah. They're so so, yeah. I, love polar bears. I don't quite know how they but work that out. Do they give them spelling tests? Right? Uh, writing tests. Oh, yeah, they probably just do it. Do it. It's probably the paw they use to hide up the, the black nose during a hunt. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, some lions mate over 50 times a day. Right there. Yeah, not, not every day of the year. Okay, they don't do that every day. No. Okay, because no. again, I'm worried. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, you know, I didn't think that dolphins. What day of the year do you do it 50 times? <laughs> well, is it, it's coming up to it. It's April, isn't it? You'd like to get out of there. I have a special day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could, we could coincide that with the uh, balloon event. <laughs> It'll just me, be me quietly humping in the corner. <coughs> Volunteers, welcome to email now, you know. Um, <coughs> and the, all, all the proceeds go to charity. If you are a desperate lioness. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, butterflies taste with their feet. I didn't know that. Interesting. I didn't know that. That is interesting. But they don't eat much, do they? Because they only live a day. No, they don't. Good point. They wouldn't need Not to eat. Point. Um, an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, just now. I, I do. Argentina has been having a plague after another, and uh, just with a whole bunch of issues and things and problems, and we had a mosquito invasion, then there was a something invasion, I can't remember now, and then we had a butterfly invasion, and those were butterflies, I can't remember the species name right now, because honestly, I didn't pay attention, but they were blue and orange and pretty. Well, the wings are pretty, the bug part were still gross, but um, we had an invasion because they were migrating north, I think. Uh, and can't migrate north if you live in for just a day. I don't remember how long they live. I think it was a couple weeks, but, uh, highly, it's, just a, it's just one of those big misconceptions that butterflies just love a day. Yeah. That's yeah. extraordinary. That is, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the, uh, the car, how big are your eyes? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I think, feel like I missed something. to eat. Um, an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain? Yeah, I knew that. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah. extraordinary. That is, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the, uh... The car, how big are your eyes? <laughs> Cruel. <laughs> Finally, I think we've discussed this before, haven't we? A cockroach will live nine days without its head yeah. before it starves to death. Yeah, that's only because it can't get water and food yet. It would be quite happy going around doing its normal thing. Yeah. I mean, Probably if, you know if you're happy. just as good without your head as with your head... May as well not have a head. I just... I don't see the point. Mm. Well, that was uh, thanks to Johnny Mango there of... Uh, what's his website called? Uh, are, are, are we all in agreement that Johnny Mango is an amazing name? <laughs> I love it. I don't know why. It's just... It doesn't seem like a real name, but it's awesome. It seems like a stage name. And now, presenting, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Mango turned into a sort of uh, volunteered uh, researcher. Yeah, he's very fast. Losecontrol.com. Can I just say as well, we've had lots of emails from different people just uh, saying they enjoy the show and offering little tidbits and things. Uh, Nick Wilson, Sarah and Lauren, Ken, Dan, Jane, she wants to match when you play Ash, never mind. Oh. Lee, Jez, Derry, there's loads of people there. Well, I'm gonna, uh, again, we are talking earlier about, you know, you not caring about being like a, a geek or a freak oh, or right, not trendy. Not. No, I'm just saying. I am trendy, yeah. yeah. And I know, yeah. And uh, I'm going to play a bit of an easy listening. I apologise to those people <coughs> who still tune in expect to um, hear two hours of new metal or gorillas. Um, and this is a uh, very old-fashioned, lovely tune. It's Bread. I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Bread. bread. <laughs> I like bread. I was... Um, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think it was over yet. Uh, oh, man. These guys are fun. And I love how they're getting more and more comfortable with each other. I like how Carl is getting comfortable to kind of just, you know, clap back and say what's on his mind and stuff. And I like how they're getting just to that kind of level of, 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 I guess, just comfort to be able to say whatever the hell they want to each other. That's nice. I like that. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's over. <laughs> so I'm leaving. But it is uh, Easter... Weekend, Sunday, I don't know what it's called. Something. It's a special weekend with bunnies and chocolate eggs. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> that was my point. Happy Easter, people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am off. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Rusty Dog. These are awesome. Um, just also really helped me just stay focused. 
Because <laughs> I have issues with that. So, wonderful people. Thank you. I am off. Love you guys. And just bye. Have a great one. Toodles. Thank you.